This is Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah, and in today's video, we will be making a simple 2D top-down player controller script. The end result will have our geometric player character capable of smoothly navigating around the scene in all directions. So with that said, let's begin. So I have a new Unity project set up within the scene, my placeholder player character. I'll start by creating a C-sharp script, call it player controller, and drag and drop it onto my character. With that done, I'll open it up and begin coding. So first of all, I'll make a public float variable called speed that will handle how fast our player can move around the environment. Since we will be using some very simple physics to get our character moving, I'll also make a private variable of type rigidbody2d that I will simply call rb, short for rigidbody. Now what I must do in my start function is specify what 2d rigidbody this rb variable is equal to. I want it to be equal to the rigidbody that we will soon attach onto our player. So I'll simply type rb is equal to the 2d rigidbody component we have attached to our player. With that done, I'll head back into Unity and add a rigidbody 2D. I'll change body type from dynamic to kinematic. In other words, I don't want my player to be affected by gravity or external forces, only by user input. Okay, awesome. In my update function, I will now create a vector2 variable called move input. We will use this variable to detect where we want to move. So I'll set it equal to a new vector2 and inside the parentheses, I'll set the x value equal to input.getAxis horizontal and the y value to input.getAxis vertical. Now what I've just written is very easy to understand. Basically whenever we press the left arrow key, the horizontal input is equal to minus one. When we press the right arrow key, the horizontal input is equal to one, and so the move input's x value will be equal to one. Same thing for the vertical input. Hitting the up arrow will give our move input vector a y value of one, and the down arrow a y value of minus one. You can of course change the name and settings of these inputs under edit, Project Settings Input, but for this tutorial, I will leave everything as is. Alright, with that done, I will create another Vector2 variable called Move Velocity, and in my update function, set it equal to my Move Input variable times Speed. Basically, the X coordinate of Move Velocity is equal to the X coordinate of my Move Input vector times Speed. So say we are moving left, so move input has x equal to minus 1, and we have a speed of 10. Then move velocity has an x value of minus 10. Same thing of course for the y axis. However, if we leave things like this, moving diagonally will have our player cover more ground faster. To fix this, simply put dot normalized after move input. So for now, all this script does is gather player input. We now must use this input to actually move our character in the game world. To do so, we will now create a fixed update function. This function is called every physics step of our game, so basically all code related to adjusting physics should be put in here. Inside this fixed update function, I will type in rb and call the built-in move position function. Inside the parentheses, we must state our current position, so rb.position, and add to this position some values. So I will add move velocity and multiply everything by time.fixed delta time to make sure I move well every physics step while my game runs, as long as I am holding down the arrow keys. So let's go over this one more time. Say we have the right arrow key pressed and a speed of 10. Move velocity will have 10 on the x and 0 on the y. So we will move our player to the position that is equal to his current position, 
So let's say the player is located at coordinates of 0 on the x and y plus the coordinates of the move velocity vector. As a result, the player will move to a position of coordinates 10 on the x and 0 on the y. Back in Unity, I will set my speed to a value of 10. Hit play and have fun moving my player character around the scene. Now, the player's movement feels nice and smooth. He doesn't stop as soon as we let go of the arrow keys, but gradually comes to a halt and slowly accelerates. But say we wanted him to run around the world in a more snappy fashion, meaning stop as soon as we let go of the arrow keys and reach his max speed immediately. Doing so is extremely simple. All we must do is change input.getAxis to input.getAxis raw. So I'll do that for the horizontal and vertical axis. Going back inside of Unity, I find myself with a more robotic, responsive feeling character. And that concludes today's Unity and C Sharp tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you have a question or a problem, of course, ask away in the comment section down below. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And with that, I will see you very soon for more game creation goodness. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.